Alrighty, I am done with more and more distributing and we're gonna move into the other six man base in the Cascade Hills region, which is also known as the Foothills. And that would be lock and key self storage. Now, this is the last base before we get to the largest base, which is the container fort in this region. And after that, I'm gonna have to go to a different region to review bases. So if you want me to go to either the valley or the plateau first, let me know down in the comment section. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna move into the base. I'm gonna talk about the upsides and downsides of the base's position on the map its appearance, what it's like to defend it from a zombie siege, as well as the good and bad parts of the base's facility setup. I'll also tell you at the end which I think is better out of the two counterpart bases, lock and key and more and more distributing. So let's get started. First, let me draw your attention to the map where you can see that I'm currently in more and more distributing and the new base, Lock and Key, is located way, way, way to the far northwest of the map, but it is located in a town center, which means that the initial loot that you're going to strip out of that area won't be a far distance from your base. In addition to that, it also means that whenever random missions pop up, they shouldn't be too far away, but it's definitely not as good as being right in the middle of the map where the two five-man bases, the corner office and the church are, because being in the middle means that your driving time to the other town centers is way lower. At any rate, let's actually get to the base and inspect it. As you approach it, the first thing you're probably going to notice is either the strange castle tower or the big old brontosaurus on the building. I, I don't even know what to tell you about this. It's definitely not your typical warehouse rows of portable storage kind of facility. Lock and key is a bit odd. I mean, it even has the funny name lock and key, get it? Kind of like more and more distributing. Notable physical characteristics about this base is that that large castle tower can be climbed and it can be used as a sniper position. It actually will function as a built-in watchtower once you capture the base. The other thing to know is that the security fence is not very secure. It's got holes and destroyed sections and it's got several doors into it. It's not the most secure area. So Zombies are capable of entering from quite a variety of locations. It's definitely not the most secure storage facility. Speaking of our buddies, the good old zombies, when they do attack your base, which they will unless you're able to keep the base very quiet, the battle is basically going to be a chaotic brawl in the middle kind of courtyard area. You can pick off zombies from the watchtower, but one of the problems is that once the zombies get too close to the watchtower, you just can't aim far enough downwards and get a good angle on them. So the watchtower has some value, but it's not perfect. Overall, I would say that Lock and Key of all the bases in the Foothills region that I've reviewed is the most compromised position defensively. That might not make a difference to you if you're very good at defending the base, but it is something to consider. All right, though, it's time to actually buy this location. It's going to require a minimum of six community members to claim, and you will also have to fork over 1,500 influence to move in. But this is what you're going to be looking at immediately after you move into the base. Now, this base is a real fixer-upper, and what I mean by that is there are so many repairable or clearable facilities compared to other bases. As far as permanent facilities go, we have four. There is a storage room, that's in every base. Command center, also in every base. The watchtower, which was the big castle tower. And then there is a still that requires repairs. I'll describe that a little more in detail later on. Then there are four facilities that can be torn down and replaced. Two of them are bedding locations that provide beds while they're up, but it's much better to tear them down to make room for more open small facility locations. And then there's two abandoned lockers that when you open them up and clear them, you get random resources. So overall, lots of stuff to do in this base as soon as you buy it. All right, it's time to get this base up to speed, maintain, tear down things, repair things, and open up these mysterious lockers. What's behind door number one? The first mysterious locker gave me... 50 parts. What's behind door number two? Mystery Locker 2 gave me 
five building material. Wait, wait, wait a second. Someone's starting a fight in my community? Who, who, who is it? Breno, Breno, you're starting fights. You want to get kicked out of my community, boy? Now that the base has been cleaned up, let's take a look at our customization options. First, we have one large outdoor facility, and then we have six small facilities, two of which are outdoor, four of which are indoor. The facilities that remain are the permanent built-ins, meaning you cannot tear them down and replace them. We've got a storage room and a command center. They're the same in every single base. No need to talk about them. But we do have a watchtower. Watchtowers are pretty common as built-ins, and what they do is provide the value of a level 2 watchtower, but because they're built-in, they do not have a daily material upkeep requirement. You still have to pay the one ammunition per day, though. But what makes this base a bit more interesting than others is the presence of a built-in secret distillery. This is basically a level two still, and the advantage of it is that you can't get a level two still unless your leader is a trader. That is the only way to upgrade the standard still to a level two still. But because this is already built in, you get to skip that requirement. What it does is, at the basic level, provide base-wide water. However, if you have a chemist, and I currently do not, I need that Bill Nye the Science Guy action, <laughs> is you can convert things into other things. The first thing you can do is convert food into fuel. So if you have a surplus of food, you can turn it into fuel. It also means that you can actively search for more food to turn into fuel, a very handy ability. The second feature is the ability to turn food into ethanol, which is a crafting resource for medicine items, for making things like the advanced incendiaries, as well as upgrading certain facilities. And the final ability is to turn food into whiskey, which is a luxury item, and luxury items have a high trading value. So you can basically turn food into influence by making whiskey and selling it to other communities. This is a really strong feature in the base, especially if you're not playing as the trader or have no interest in currently playing as the trader, because having the incentive to get more food, stockpile food up, search all the likely areas for food, because you can turn it into other useful items, it's just really good. So these are the facilities that I chose for lock and key. Bear in mind, though, that you could take this base further than me if you've got the right people with the right skills, so consider this kind of a sample. Now, in the top right corner, we've got two gardens. One is for food, one is for medicine, and those neutralize my food and medicine needs. In the top left corner, we've got a kitchen. The kitchen cooks our food into buffs to your morale and your stamina. Down below, we've got a workshop and an infirmary, and you just gotta have those. Just make sure you always have a workshop and an infirmary. Without a workshop, you cannot repair and salvage weapons, and without an infirmary, it is really tough to recover from injuries. The last slot, I chose to put a fighting gym in, but really it's a wild card. Just put whatever the heck you want in there, it doesn't really matter. I chose the fighting gym because it gives you a health bonus. And lastly, for the large facility, we have the lounge for some chillaxification. Just stop! The lounge provides two major benefits. The first one is that it gives you plus two beds when it's upgraded to at least level two. And that's nice because you'll notice in my facility builds, I never build any dedicated bedding areas. I always rely on the lounge and my outpost for beds. The other big advantage, though, it has is that it supercharges your morale with its existing features, but... It'll also accept specific mods, and the one that I have is the original Xbox facility mod that requires both the lounge and electricity, but if you have all the requirements, it gives you a huge boost to your morale because your community gets to play that Halo CE 1v1 Blood Gulch action, and that basically means we're like Xbox-ception. I'm like playing Xbox, and my guys are playing Xbox in the Xbox. So it's time for the big questions. Is Lock and Key a good base, and how does it stack up against more and more distributing? The answer is that I really like this base, and I think it is a lot better than more and more distributing. Why is that? 
Well, more and more, it does have that second large facility, but it just kills me to be living out in, like, the middle of nowhere. It's just out in the bayou. It's out in the wilderness. I just do not like the driving time. That just kills more and more for me. But... Lock and Key feels like a really natural evolution from the previous bases. You know, it's got the built-in watchtower, one large facility, and then a whole bunch of customizable small facilities. Very familiar feeling. But on top of that, it does have that secret distillery. And if you don't have a trader or you didn't choose the trader as a leader, that facility is badass. Anyways, that is the end of the review. Like my video and subscribe for more State of Decay content. And remember that you don't have to be good to get good.